Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Geo from Smart Makers, and today we're going to get some inspiration from the community. We're going to look at some Node Red cookbooks with Home Assistant, and we're going to find out if there are any good ideas and things that you could perhaps apply to your own smart home. But now, let's roll the intro. There'll be two timestamps in the description. There'll be a beginner section, which is what we're going to be starting with. There's going to be a more intermediate advanced section towards the middle of the video. So we're going to look at some examples that are simple, but effective and they can apply to many of you. So I'm on this website, jessieweb.com at github.io and you can find the link in the description down below. The owner of this blog has decided to split the nodes by room. So we're gonna follow the same order. First one we can see is the bathroom, motion, time, brightness. So this flow over here is quite simple. What it does is it starts with the motion detected and then it has this sort of split condition. So you see these two arrows. So we have these two nodes, one going up, one going down. So this signifies if this is true, so if the time is between 1 a.m. and 6 a.m., then we will turn on the light at 50% brightness. And if it's not, you can see the arrow going down and we're turning the light on at 100%. So this gives you that like night light effect. If you want to use the code, um, and I'm actually gonna show you how you can import it in Node Red, you can copy it from here. To copy any flow that you find online that has code underneath like this, I'm gonna show you how that simple it is. Click on copy. Go to your Node Red instance, wherever you have it, either inside Home Assistant or a separate URL. You can go to, for example, a new tab over here. You can create a new tab with this plus button. Technically, it's called the flow. Or you could just import it in your existing tab or flow. I go on the menu over here. I click import. Here, you're going to paste in the code that we copied in previously. Click import. And then you can see that you can move it around a little bit. So just tap on it. And then you'll see it settles and you've got it now in. Now you've got to go and need to configure things individually. So for example, the alpha is using a particular binary sensor. So you're going to need to change it to the one that you're using. You've got to look to see if you've got a home assistant server created and you're going to need to use your own home assistant server and not the one that you created. I've noticed that the one that you had originally is the one at the top and, the, and it just creeps adding more and more over here when it sees new home assistant servers. So you configure it all, you click deploy, and you can uh, basically test it out. The second automation in the page, high humidity. So when it's high humidity in the bathroom, it turns on this fan, it then waits for five minutes, and then it's gonna check if we still have humidity in the room. If we do have humidity in the room, so that if it's true, we wait for one more minute, and then we loop back again, and it checks it again, basically, and it will continue going through this flow until this condition, which probably set within the code what actually is the parameter, but you can probably personalize that yourself. Then you will exit and we'll turn off the fan that we initially turned on. So this is a, it's a very useful flow that you can apply to many use cases. We've got some other use case over here. Now this use case, I think is more just to understand what you can do in Node Red. The use case isn't really that uh, great. Basically what it is, based on the humidity, we have three states. So we will turn on the lights at basically different colors so that will indicate what the state of the humidity is in, in the room. It might be useful, it might not be useful, that's up to you, but you can try it out. Let's go to the other rooms, let's go to the bedroom. So the bedroom is an interesting flow. So we have two people living in this house, I'm assuming, so Jerry and Beth. So if Jerry leaves the bed, um, we have some sort of question, right? We have a condition that we are uh, checking for. So we're basically checking if, if this person, if person A leaves the bed, has also the person B left the bed? If so, then we turn off the fan or for example, turn on bedroom lights or whatever, whatever, turn off noise machine. So you can see there's some various actions of what you can do after you've found this out. And then the reverse still applies. So person B leaves the uh, bed, is person A still in the bed? And so I think this is a quite neat scenario. You could probably do that, for example, to uh, if you're leaving your home Right, I'm thinking that's a great example where you can apply this logic over here. Let's move into cars. Cars, we have a low fuel. So if you have low fuel, it just sends you an alert. And I'm imagining this alert is a notification. We can actually see it here using the service domain notify and it's using the Telegram service. You could be using a uh, different uh, notification mechanism. Climate, here is another one. Uh, it's quite simple. So it basically checking if it's cold. If it's cold, this process triggers. 
then it turns on the heat, then it sets the desired temperature to 80, I guess it's 80 degree Fahrenheit in this example. You'll probably just skip this turn on the heat and just set the desired temperature, depends on how your climate is set up. We have the same concept as before, basically based on the temperature, we can turn the lights different colors, so there's different meaning. And we have a similar one over here based on basically the thermostat change. This one also is really quite cool. It has this pattern again, similar to what the fan pattern we saw earlier. So this turns on the drive, driveway light when the garage opens and it turns it off after five minutes or earlier if the garage door is closed. This is one of these automations where you might write them wrong, but then you get them right afterwards. So here it basically starts, the garage is open, turns on the light, it waits for five minutes, and then if not, basically it will just bump, turn off the light, right? So this is the, the initial flow. Or earlier, if the door garage door closes, so you can see that the, when this kicks off, it will stop this timer. So this will basically stop this timer, which will then push this over here. I quite like this flow. Uh, I might try it out eventually. Speak state. Now this one, uh, I'm not entirely sure is quite useful. This basically tells you what the state is of something. So this tells you if the garage is open or if the garage is closed, set the volume of the device regardless to 80% and then speak, okay? So that's fine. You could probably get it and do this in a smarter way, but this is super straightforward for anyone that's like just starting out with Node-RED and Home Assistant. So hopefully I think at this stage you start getting an understanding of why it might be interesting to try out Node-RED instead of just using the Home Assistant automations. So this is a banded player. So it's basically talking about turning off a media player that has been paused for an hour. So we see this media pause an hour. So similar to using this timer and stop timer, same like the garage example. This is an alarm clock, could be really uh, applicable to many uh, of you. It has a 7 a.m. weekday setting. This is the inject node sets the volume to 80 percent places mp3 this actually be quite a cool example to actually find out how how you can actually play mp3s let me see what they're doing okay so it's using this url path but i think it's just an example so you can see they've uploaded this file example so you might need to jiggle around with this and i think this will work out of the box that easy this is something that actually i do use a lot when the media starts playing turn off the light this one i'll tell you uh, it, will, it will get annoying soon because if you pause for any reason let's say for example that you change the way the light was set and then you pause the movie or whatever you're watching and then you start again then the the, the lights will reset to the default and not to your customized version so if this already triggered it will get annoying but this is like super simple to know and it just gives you some idea of what you can do uh, here again like media was pause then set the lightness to brighten brightening to 50 percent this is actually quite interesting so if you pause the movie then we think you're gonna make you're gonna move so you, the light should turn on a little bit allows you to like you know do something and then go but what happens if it's like daytime right this flow for example will just turn on your light even if it's daytime and that will be like annoying and it's not going to be useful so here you need to put some sort of time take date and time parameter the one that for example that we saw in the i think the early example where was it yeah this example over here so you're gonna need to uh, either do a time, but then that's not really ideal. You really wanna understand the position of the sun, sunset or not, or if the room is dark, so you can use another sensor to do that. But again, like these are like beginner level uh, examples. So I really recommend you just take a look at them and let me know in the comment section down below which ones you actually enjoy. If you're getting value out of the video, remember to like this video, subscribe. If you wanna learn how to build your own node red flows and learn logic and flow logic, then you might want to listen to today's sponsor's message from brilliant.org. One of the courses I'm actually doing is practice with logic. And you can actually see here, I'm like moving around the robots. It's quite a fun, interactive way of learning. So just watching videos all the time. And when you actually complete one of these actions, it gives you one of those satisfying moments that you've actually achieved and made a step forward in your learning. I love brilliant.org a lot because it really helps me practice logic, problem solving, maths, and it's got a quite a broad range of courses that will keep your brain active and thinking all the time. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash 
smart home makers. The first 200 of you that will get 20% off brilliant annual subscription. Now let's look at some of the more advanced options. This one over here is quite interesting. This example over here is checking if an entity was in a certain state within the last 24 hours. So this might, there could be some valuable use cases here. So we're looking at the history of, a, of the device, right? Within the 24 hours. Think of scenarios like you had a power outage during the night and maybe, you know, your, your fridge was off, but it wasn't off. And in, but in the morning you, it was back up and running again. You want to know like for how long it was off or if the temperature went over a certain degree during the night or day or whatever you want. There are two options here. One is using more nodes over here. And the second option is actually created a function where you use some coding. Probably play around with both and see which one you are happy with and you understand. Now remember, anytime you copy code from anywhere, you ought to just check through a little bit that it's not doing anything wacky or weird or sending messages uh, somewhere else, right? Just, just keep an eye on what you copy and just don't blindly copy everything that you see. Uh, and if you don't understand it, probably try not to, don't run it if you're not entirely sure. This link has been provided by Zach Kaush. I don't know if I'm getting this name right. I apologize if I'm not, but you'll find the link in the description down below. This is a, a brilliant cookbook. Saving and restoring states for me is one of my favorite ones. I've actually put it in here right underneath here. This is, I will show you how this works. So the timestamp will inject it. This is just for testing purposes. What it will do is it's going to snapshot the entity. So snapshot entities is creating this scene. It's creating a scene on the fly, right? And the scene ID uh, is using something called like before. This is the name of the scene. So let me just go on the three dots and I'll show you in more detail. Uh, and the snapshot entity is uh, the entity that you want to snapshot. So let's say for example, that we've got a light. We've got a light that's in a certain state. Then an alert happens and then we want, you know, the light goes red. But then after the uh, light goes red, we don't want to switch it off again. We want to put it back to the same state as it was before. So how do we do this? We look at the next uh, one over here, so it goes change entities. Now this is the example that I gave you, right? It's just gonna do something different, right? You know, so it's, it's gonna flash red or whatever. So you would set the entity ID if you've copied this and you set your brightness or your RGB color, whatever you wanna set. So that's done. Um, and then for the tutorial example, we're having, we're having a delay, right? To prove that this works. So you can set this down to 55 seconds, two seconds. And then this is the really cool part. So we'll restore your previous entity. So what we'll do is it's gonna turn on a scene and this scene is called scene.before. Uh, and that's it really, right? So it's it, what it does is it looks at it, it creates a scene and it's all done. Next time at Smart on Makers, we're gonna look at more examples like these. We're gonna find more examples from the community. If you have brilliant examples, leave them in the comment section down below because I'm gonna look through them and the one that gets uploaded the most, I will make a video on them. If you wanna see my next video, click over here. This was Joe from Smarter Makers. Remember to like and subscribe to this video. See you in the next one, ciao.